whatever. So we, we go to Jamaica. It included this um, kind of VIP beef patty package. Exp- <laughs> <laughs> this expediting process through customs. So basically, like you get off, you get off the plane. We and that's the only thing that sucks about flying is you have to have the mask on the entire flight. Yeah, and sucks. that's just four hours of just there. And I'm like, I can't imagine if someone was flying to Fiji or something where it's like. But the great hours. part about that is like now you're vaccinated, so you can get a mask that doesn't work. Yeah, oh, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean. Like, those, oh, and they don't those and it was surgical com- ones that like just leave this completely wide open and a completely full flight. There's no more saving the middle seat open. Right. It's just pack them in because they're trying to make up the lost money, right? So we get this. They part of this package includes like you know besides driving us from the airport because it's like an hour and twenty minutes from the airport to where we're staying. Yeah. So they're well, like we include it's a donkey ride. <laughs> it's a burrow, <laughs> and so we're including that, and then uh, so they say so give us this thing. We we land there. This woman, like, you know, has the sign. She holds up our names, and she walks us. The the line for customs is, like, two hours long, it looks like. It's just hundreds of people snaked all the way going this way. They basically do, like, a fuck you guys, walk us right through everybody because of this little, like, thing that I think if you bought it separately, it would be, like, 60 bucks, which already would be worth it, you know? So we Mm. go right through customs. They take us to, like, this refreshment area that they give us some, you know, just stupid, like, finger foods and, no, finger foods and just some free drinks, right? While they're, while they go and call the hotel and figure out where the guy who's picking us up is and tell him to pull the car around for us. Whoa. It's like this, like, door-to-door service that I was like, this is the great, and it's part of the airport. It's not even part of the hotel. It's like the airport offers this service, <laughs> and you're like, the best $60 I would have spent had it not been included in this thing already. So, wow. So would we, you have even known to buy that, though? Of course not. Of yeah. course not. But I, where do you get something like that? I I don't know. I guess if you were booking like through that airport, maybe that would be one of like the eleven options where they're like, Do you want to buy a bag? Do you want to upgrade your seat and all that? Which right. you probably just would have said skip, skip, skip. Was it JCA? What's, what's Jerk Chicken Air? <laughs> I just want to make sure the podcast listeners are done laughing. <laughs> All right, you guys are caught up. You didn't need to pause it. We kept it. We let it go for you. Uh, so we get our we get our driver. We get this guy. Love this guy. His name was Omar, mm. and he's just like you know, just like the best kind of like exactly how you would picture a cab driver born and raised in Jamaica to be. Just like giving us the the tourism, like you know elevation above sea level explaining mm-hmm. the island and what kind of this and the kind of people that live here the kind of people that live there and and uh we're driving through this whole thing and they drive on the other side of the road there and stuff so and then you know about i'm i'm not kidding dude 10 minutes into the ride starts being like so you got everything you need man and i'm like yeah yeah you know we're just gonna hang out at the beach we're not gonna do much and he's like cool cool do you need anything though and i was like well I was like, it's funny you say that because, you know, Lewis was also in Jamaica. when right. I, We were both in Jamaica at the same time. And Lewis told me that there is a legal dispensary that is that was like a literally three-minute drive from our hotel. <laughs> and so I was like, but the laws kind of are like they have to drop you off directly there. And then you ha- if you leave, you have to be like accounted for just for like contact tracing because uh-huh. there was a spike going on in Jamaica when we went in there. So there was a from that day we landed at 11, 11 a.m. from twelve p.m. until mon- twelve p.m. Saturday until Monday. It was kind of like a lockdown of sorts for oh, them. So Jamaica all the businesses. Making me crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, I know you've just been waiting to work that in. Yep. <laughs> and so there's more. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> so I am. Um, so I. So you know, I start going. You know, there's a legal dispensary, and uh, you know, would you mind pulling off there and stuff? And instantly, he's like, "That weed is terrible." He basically is telling you it's like terrible. You have to. You have to do, do a fake accent. doctor's appointment. I couldn't do for that long. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that weed is no good, boy. <laughs> <laughs> So It'd goes, be better off getting from me cousin. So immediately he just goes, I got everything you need, man. It goes in the dashboard at a red light and just was like... A crab comes out playing the metal drums. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just hands you a bag. So he comes over, he, he gives me, he's like, you know, gives me everything I need. And then, you know, but the one thing he gives me was like, he tried to give me papers, but there was literally only one paper left, you know? And I, I asked for like an eighth and it was like so much more than yeah, that. Yeah. And so, and so he... Ended up pulling off at a at a gas station to get me papers, which is also so hilarious and trusting that he just like left his running cab and like he left us in the running cab and ran in and got papers for us. Wow. Like, yeah. So you didn't but, smoke blunts for me. 
Well, he didn't offer me blunts. He offered me papers. They smoke they smoke joints there a lot of the times. I know. But um, I saw in Lewis's stories as he kind of like sexily looked into the he camera that blunt he was raps. smoking blunts. He's a phony baloney. Yeah. Um, so, so whatever. So the guy gives us to where we're like already perfect. Like we're not even at the place yet. We already don't have to worry about weed. We got that all set up. We get there and this place is just like phenomenal. Here's the thing. They have 80 rooms total in this place. 80? So, so even when, <laughs> even when it's <laughs> packed, it's still only 80 rooms in the whole place. It's very small. This week that we're there, there's 20 people in the entire resort. Oh, so it is yeah. like. Pretty much hours and hours alone. Mm-hmm. So we we they he, Omar pulls us up there. Immediately the people come over. They know our first and last names. They're like greeting us. They sh- walk us around the ground. Everyone is just like over the top customer service at an uh, eleven out of ten. Right? They come on and they're like, "Are you guys celebrating anything?" And you know my scam always yes. anniversary, anniversary. For some reason, little jet lag, little tired panicked said honeymoon so now we just gotta live that lie because also in the notes i found out i after, thought it usually was honeymoon sometimes it's honeymoon we go back and forth but this time it's more effort i guess yeah and it's more effort and here's the thing erica put in the notes ahead of time that it was anniversary but i jumped the gun and said honeymoon and they were so nice they like didn't even call us on it but yeah. now we have to live up that lie and then i kind of undid it where I said it was like an anniversary moon where we got married right in late 2019 Every but couldn't day is take a honeymoon we were like us. I was like we got married right in late 2019 and we couldn't take our honeymoon because of COVID so now this is kind of like a delayed honeymoon but we've already been married yeah. a couple of years so you're really like, a genius liar that is like <laughs> oh, that is so perfect yes anniversary perfect. moon Alex you're just you're just not one for this world like Feeney and I just know how to spin yarn and make up lies on the spot absolutely yeah because so, I would have thought of that ex- exactly as well what's funny is those people were like we don't care yeah yeah (laughs) well they did make a nice little a towel swan for us with rose petals that (laughs) night so um but so we go around and you know the that first night we you know we we go right to the beach we hang out there we get drinks on the beach we have we start hanging out with the dude who was like the security guard there who's so awesome and it's so funny because he's like he's he's about my age i think but he's he's Americanized in that he, he's like we get Family Guy here and we had uh, like WWF growing up so he you know, so we're bonding over like when we used to watch like Stone Cold Steve Austin <laughs> he's speaking in a, in a perfect uh, perfect patois and then he's like uh, Lois he just changes yeah. into the dynamite he's like, family you know guy. about the family guy you know that episode where Stewie comes in? He's just, he's like, he's the coolest dude. He's the coolest fucking dude. So we're my, hanging. My weird li- oh, <laughs> well, that, that was, was a an okay. great Stewie. That was okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, that that's all I'm doing. Okay, for fear of getting it wrong. <laughs> so we go. So we have dinner that night or whatever, and then afterwards they have like a different thing, entertainment thing every night. And the first night is like karaoke night. That's mm. like the thing, and people are like, "Oh, you got to check out the karaoke night in this martini bar." So you're like, "Great!" So we go to dinner. We go over to this martini bar. We're having some cocktails, and it's like you know, there's only eight people in that bar and like so it's already like not everybody's gonna be doing karaoke so the, the 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 and we know this the person who has to host the karaoke if no one's doing karaoke you gotta do karaoke and this poor woman have a sore throat yeah so she's <laughs> she's belting it out and and what she's doing which i thought was so fucking genius instead of singing every song she would sing a song and then she would go back and like put on some music she would just kind of play like what do you guys want to hear yeah and then play some music videos and stuff and because dmx had just died she was playing dmx and like as a person because we walk in and they're like michael and erica celebrated their honeymoon from new york they were like dmx <laughs> as you walked in yeah as we walked in so we're ready like and also i've been drinking so it's taking every ounce of me to not like do carry do DMX at oh, karaoke? Yeah, you should have. You could have gotten away with. A I lot. was so close, and uh, <laughs> as, as a New Yorker, I think they think they that's okay. Yeah, so I am like, <laughs> I'm trying so hard not to not to sing and stuff, and so people are all singing, and they're like, you know, find a song. So I do that thing where I've always in my head go. These, if, if ever I get picked for karaoke, I have these 10 songs I could choose from that'll blow the doors off. Mm. And then every time they're like, what karaoke song do you want to do? That list is gone. I've yeah. never known a song. <laughs> I don't know any words to any songs. I don't know anything. Mm-hmm. And I spend, I'm not kidding, like 
the next hour on my phone, like looking at Spotify, being like, what's a good song? What a pump people? And they're like, only 20 minutes left to carry up. Mike, do you have a song? And I'm like, I'm looking, I'm looking. I'm like panicking and I'm drinking more and I'm trying to find a song. And I go, and I eventually decide. The answer is in this cup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So eventually I have enough drinks and I go, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do Billy Joel. I'll do some Billy Joel. That'll fucking get people going. It's a nice, fun song. There, was, there were people from Massachusetts there and stuff like that. And so like, there's some, you know, there's some stadies that are going to like, you know, that are interested. So I'm like, I'll, I'll do fucking Billy Joel. I'll do Billy Joel. So I walk over there and I don't know what happened, but I was like, I had Billy Joel at the corner of my mouth and instead I just did Rick Astley. I just was like, she's like, what do you want to do? And I go, Rick Astley. And she's like, all right, what song? And I was like, never going to give you up, obviously. Like it took you 57 minutes to think of that. Here's the thing. I Rick rolled the crowd uh-huh. and they were like, and they were mostly older crowd. They were like, for those people were in like their fifties and stuff. We were the younger people there by like a good margin and it fucking crushed. I mean, it was, <laughs> dude, I was holding gorgeous yeah. doing, we're no strangers to love. <laughs> yeah. I don't rules. know why every time so I think, do I. <laughs> I mean, that's great. <laughs> that's when you want to make your Irish goodbye.